Hello there, Reason users. Pooba here, and welcome to my channel. And today I'm going to very, very quickly go with the 13.1 update because it's actually worth a video because there's quite a few changes in it. And a little bit later on, I'm going to be giving some tips on about the new favorite tags that we can play around with. So, one of the first things you actually may notice is the fact that when you click on a device now, you get these little plus signs above and below. So, if we click here, add instrument, add effect will bring up the browser, or we can just go directly to the inner instrument because it might be in a, a combinator, so you might add another instrument, or we can add an effect. And obviously, at the top, we can do the same with adding actually players. So, I'm just going to grab a player, and the same thing will apply. I can now have the plus on the top and the bottom and decide where I wish to place my next player, and my next player I'm going to place is this. This leads me into two, this two new players. We've got note tool and we've got random tool and they're actually all to do with manipulating obviously the data that's actually coming down the stack and they're quite handy little devices and I've actually done a separate video on it because there is a little couple of gotchas we've got to watch out for on the back. Let's very, very quickly pop into the sequencer where there's actually been a couple of changes. One of the ones is now obviously I can actually come up to the device. I can quite simply right click and we've now got this option here which is split clips at song position so you can obviously position things. The other one which is a feature which is coming which a lot of people wanted was actually down here. So if I was actually come here and let's say make this nice and big. Obviously when we're in this mode we want to see really what we're doing here. So now we can actually stretch that down and obviously we can really zoom in and see what we're actually up to. And again once again here we've got that option where we can actually split at notes here. So we're used to obviously coming into the grid and obviously drawing our notes in, whatever we're going to draw in. But what's the new features now? I can actually now use the keyboard and as I'm going to playing around, I can scroll around so I can obviously control them. And, we can move them down. and that's obviously, we can update that in our preferences. We can turn it on and off using the trigger notes while editing. Shame there's no shortcut key for that because that would be absolutely brilliant. If we select a note, we can obviously right click on that and now we've got this chop note too. And we can actually sort of set different values of what we want to actually chop it up into. There's been a lot of updates to the browser, quite a few. I'm going to obviously forget some, but I know that with samples now, there's going to be, there's like the length and tempo which has been added. Obviously you can obviously update information like the author and all that kind of thing. We've got user tags, so you can obviously come along and you just sort of literally right click on these and then you can come down and there's a number of tags that we can, we can select. Um, and also you can go into user tags and also you can add your own tag there. You can add tags up the top here. You can do it all different ways. And as I say, there's an info which we'll touch on in a second. So tags literally just work. So if I'm going to click on, oh, it happens to be Fred, I happen to have two patches in there. I know that if I click on house, um, them two patches happen to be the same. But if I click on video, there's only one patch which crosses the whole lot. So obviously that one had three patches. If I now just right click and then go into edit info, we can come into this screen where obviously I can just literally at the top and say, hey, I'm going to add my new author. Hit enter. And there we go. We, we now got it there. Other things you can actually sort of do is obviously at the top here now, if I actually start typing in who there, you can see, obviously I can do it by name, or I can actually just select on the author here and just say, hey, show me all the Pooh Bear patches. So it'll actually pick up the ones I've actually put into that list. If I start typing stuff in, now we can obviously filter on different sort of containers. Obviously we've got the name, we've got the kind, we've now got the rack extensions, and obviously we've got the refills. So obviously with that search criteria in it, you can obviously go and pick that as well. And obviously we've got folder names, which will actually come up as well. So there's quite a lot going on here. And I think the actual overall performance is um, increased. Um, also supports, if I remember rightly, uh, sound fonts are back again. So let's actually move on to the favorites, which is obviously a favorite of mine as well, where obviously you can obviously add your own devices where you wish to add them and you can just freely switch between them. I can also hold down my control, which I think is the command key on the Mac. And then obviously I can click more than one. And obviously if they actually, like I've got this device happens to be in both of these and my EQ. So this happens to be a free EQ. So I happen to be in both of them. So you can do that. And if I made a mistake, I can just click on either one of these or anywhere else I wanted to. Um, so I don't have to actually unclick other things and find that nice and quick to actually navigate around. And obviously if I un unclick it now, it's going to select everything because I actually turn everything off at the very, very top so I can actually see everything going. In here, I can also type in the name. So if I was to type in the name free, obviously it's going to look at free, it's going to look at what other words I might have it. So under drum, 
you might say, well, this drum name's not called free, but it says you've got free in the manufacturer name. So it's looking absolutely everywhere. So you've got to be semi-cautious. And so one of my little tips really is when you're actually devising maybe your favorite names is to try and come up with something really, really unique. So in my case, if I had to type in the word there, Z free, because that's what I've actually called it. I know Z free is very, very unique. So it's actually only selected all devices actually in that particular favorites list without me actually having to select the list itself. It might be, I find personally jumping around the list is a little bit better. And you may notice actually when every time I actually blank this out, it's a little bit slow. So let's say I'm looking for the word beat. So I can type the word beat in and we've got it. Now, obviously if I'm very quick at typing, I can type in the next word and it's actually quite quick actually finding it. But as I say, if I go back, it's, it has to wait and it's got to read and it's got to read. So it can be actually a very slow way of doing things. Another way I found to do this, if you're a bit of a slow typer, is quite simply typing your next word by leaving your last word up there and then just delete it out. And it's very, very then quick of actually finding them devices. You can select multiple devices at the same time. You can right click, obviously you can put them into a basic favorite. You can do a hide. Obviously you've got categories you can add them to, or you can add your own tags. As I've said, that's, so this is a quint of your favorites really, when you can assign a new favorite. I know it says the word tag, I think of the word favorite there and just convert it that way. The hidden tag really is designed where you could actually hide any kind of rack extension. I use it when it doesn't actually find the duplicates correctly. Because the reason it doesn't find, say, some duplicates, so if I say, let's turn off all rack extensions, and then I'd say, hide duplications, and then I'm just gonna scroll down until I find a duplication, and very, very quickly I've actually found one here. It's because there's obviously a space. And the other classic one would be the X underscore 64, because obviously, Old devices, there was a 32 bit, so they said, hey, when we made, built the 64 version, we gave it an X64, and that's hence why the name X64 came out all over the place. And VST3s have dropped it. So again, I can just right click this, go into tags, sorry, I can just right click this and shove this straight into hide, and you have to go into tags. That is now in my hidden, and you can see it's now disappeared. So all hidden stuff just automatically goes, and you can obviously see it just by clicking on the hidden tag at the top. There's been a lot of bug fixes, so it's worth going through the release notes to make yourself aware of what's been fixed, just in case you're hitting them issues in the past. Don't forget to check out my videos about the new player devices, and go and have some fun. Thank you for watching, and bye for now.